No, all the people except one. Meeting is not. Oh, we're live. Oh, there you go. Hey. Second time's a charm. Right. Yay. Yay. Good We're job. We're all here. <laughs> We're all here. Okay, so. Meeting is not. Okay, where I'm talking. talking. All right. <laughs> we do that every week, too. I do that every, <laughs> every week. Doris Tulifau is on watching. So Brown Girl Hi. Woke. Brown Girl Woke. She says, love you guys. So we are here. Carl and I, welcome to It's Kinda Midweek, FICA. And um, we have the beautifully talented women, um, Fanga Misa and Epi Almavai. They are founders of Samoan Solutions. And um, they are powerful, super women community. It's a community-based organization that where they have been doing tons and tons and tons of stuff not only for Samoans but for Pacific Islanders and our favorite event always is all your events but Fa'omo <laughs> Samoa is uh, one of my favorites and then the turkey trot which we try to raise so much money for your um, your event and we get a big team together and you know we try to compete and, purple and we, rain purple <laughs> rain yes <laughs> We try to, oh yeah, we got a team, you get a team, you know, so we're like, <laughs> trying to get people on, but um, we'll start with Fonga, uh, people that are just tuning in and don't know who these wonderful women are, Fonga, uh, Misa, can we ask you to just tell us a little bit about yourself and everything? Okay, I am big sister to Epi Omavai, and I'm also a mother and um what else i'm a teacher i'm a christian and um a community organizer yeah. with someone solution awesome I, we just had somebody say i want to do the turkey trot let's hope covid eases up so we'll get into turkey trot yes. in a little bit epi Almavai. epi tell us a little bit about yourself uh, i family also, i am the little big sister of fanga and I am a, a believer in our Lord uh, Jesus and uh, God up above. And I am a mother of two children through my womb and many children that I've uh, just kind of taken under my wing along the way. So <laughs> some by force, some by force. Um, I am... I'm the youngest daughter of um, our parents, Pemasa um, Omavai and Puatau Nofo, Setonga Omavai, and I am also, you know, I'm a jack of all trades. I do, I love to learn. I'm a life learner and I'm a, a Pacifica creative. So yeah, that's me. Awesome, and, and you have your own company. Yes, yeah. I have my, own business, Fama Malu Design. So if you, this is my shameless plug. If you need any banners, artwork, anything done, hit me up. I'm fast and affordable. Yes, she is. And we use her <laughs> and abuse her often. <laughs> yeah. Can you get this back like this evening? That's right. how, that's how <laughs> short our deadlines are. Quick <laughs> and reliable, and you'll love her work. Um, so we were talking about um stories which made me want to talk to you guys because we were talking like not well aiku stories really and then it led to legends and then it led to your wonderful play that you guys put on um Fangongo Samoa and so can you tell us a little bit about that and and how you're practicing you're having rehearsals because of COVID and I know some things have changed um you were due to, to um, have your show last week or this week and because of COVID, you're changing stuff around. So can you, you tell us how that started? I know I know the story, but um, you know, people that haven't um, seen the play, which they will soon, but not right now. Can you tell us a little bit about everything about Fangongo Samoa? Up you it. <laughs> okay, so Fangongo Samoa, is a play that was written by our aunt, uh, Sia Figuel, who is a Pacifica um, writer, poet, um, health advocate, 
uh she's also everything and and we're also birthday buddies so oh, yeah and, and uh so she wrote the play and it was performed in uh utah at one of their flag days like and maybe five or six years ago and uh, she gave us permission to use the play whenever we wanted and then um, it just happened to be that uh three years ago uh timing and funding aligned itself perfectly and we were able to bring Fangongo samoa to a theater here in the Bay Area. So um, this year is our third year putting on the, uh, the play, Fangongo Samo, through the generosity of the San Bruno Community Foundation, a grant that uh, we've been awarded for the third year now. We're so grateful and thankful um, to them. And the play basically it walks through different legends and uh, someone's stories, origin of um, cultural practices, origin of things that are very familiar to us, uh, such as like say the coconut, um, and then also uh, traditions um, such as the satao. And so they're based off of these stories and then what Sia has done and we've kind of followed with uh, um, as far as when we've adapted different seeds to incorporate new legends is she's just kind of put a narrative to how she feels like these characters uh, may have um, interacted with one another um, sort of back then. And then also kind of, you know, there's some, some modernized humor in there and uh, yeah, that's kind of the origins of Fangongo Samoa. So this year we, or last year, um, or the first year, I should say, we ran the play exactly as Sia um, um, had written it. And then last year we incorporated some new legends uh, to keep the show fresh. And then this year we also are incorporating a couple of new legends and bringing back some from some scenes from the first year. Yeah. You're it, Fanga. And then during the play, you guys, like you guys do so much great work that during the play, with, before that or during the process, you guys um, raise money for your scholarship that you give away during the play. You want to tell us about that, Fanga? Uh, sure. So the Lumanai Education Gift is a scholarship um, that we started with our founders 12 years ago. 12, Epi? 11? Uh, maybe 11. I think it was 11 years ago. But anyway, it's open to Samoan students from the Bay Area, grades six through 12. Um, and during the last two years of Fangongo, we decided to present the, the awards to the Lumanai winners. And actually last year we added a category which is for um, college transfer students from two year college to university. Um, so, yeah, so we, I feel like we awarded maybe 30, 32, wow. 33 students over the last 11 years. Um, yeah, and also last year we added an art category for students who are artists. And this year um, we had two, two students who actually won the, that award this year. So it's been, it's been a nice, long journey um, and all of our our funds for the scholarship are community raised so we've been doing crowdfunding since the very beginning and and this year we met our fundraising goal of five thousand dollars so thank you very much to all of our community members all of our returning donors right. all of That's our awesome. new donors um you know crowdfunding and and facebook fundraisers have made it possible for people to donate from all around the world so we've been very fortunate and our students are very fortunate to have people supporting them from every part of the globe and um, helping to encourage them to pursue their education, whether it be in secondary or higher ed. And yeah, so not sure how that's going to work this year as far as presenting if we'll get to have our winners come out. Um, but we did actually do a drive-by um, presentation for each of them oh, a nice. couple of weeks ago. Uh, Epi went and rented a pickup truck and our Fangongo cast members decorated the truck with our banner for Lumanai with the past Lumanai winners and, um, and balloons and, oh, and nice. signs for them. Nice. And so, 
we pulled up at their house and gave them their awards, um, which was, it's not the same, but right. it was still really, it was still really nice, you know, to yeah. meet them and, and, you know, to give them their award and their family members who lived there with them in their home were there. So yeah, it was a good, good experience. Oh, you guys did a how, awesome job with that, yeah. It's interesting how creative people have gotten um, to show their love and their appreciation uh, virtually or you know adapting to shelter in place and all these different mm. restrictions that we have on us in our lives and we're still finding ways uh, innovative and creative ways to tell people that we appreciate them or recognize them um, so that's you know just another example of you know what can you do well if you if you think about it and you want to do it enough you're going to find a way to to express that um, I had a question about uh, so you know, full disclosure, a little uh, uh, about Naki and I, a lot of our stuff starts, we're driving down the street and we go, oh, well, we should do this. And then it turns into like FICA is a good example. Um, <laughs> we just, she wanted to have a uh, round table uh, with uh, powerful women role models and just dis discuss um, different topics. And we were trying to, we were thinking about YouTube and then it, we ended up on uh, Elijah's The Music Box and that is where you know FICA came from and it was really like us just going well I don't know we could do this we could do that what was there any um like when a play like did you guys have um experience with productions of uh stage productions and all those kind of things like how do those conversations start when you decide you know hey let's do a play where there's you know, we have to have casting calls and we have to have music and we've got to have, you know, all that kind of stuff. How did that start? Uh, probably on a late night phone call between Fonga and I. <laughs> After we probably were just recapping um, a show we were binge watching on Netflix and then it probably just came up. That's how things happen. Like uh, right. Fonga and I, we talk very often, you know, there's seldom a day where goes well, goes by that Fang and I don't speak and so then when we don't speak our children are like hey is something going on <laughs> but that that's how often we're in communication with one another so when ideas like this come up um or some somebody will inbox us and say hey and I'll tell you know we'll be talking about random stuff that I'll say hey this person inbox us um you know did they need something what would they like to do do they want to collaborate and so we'll have that conversation and it won't necessarily always mean that that's the time that it's going to happen. But because we've kind of put the seed out there, it's always on our mind. It's always on the, on, in the back of our mind. And, and uh, even some folks might think that we like forgot about them or forgot that they had hit us up. But um, we, we really remember stuff like that. And then we try and figure out a way where we can be as resourceful as we can with any um, financial resources that come our way. And then especially as resourceful as we can with our time. Um, Fang and I were probably both uh, missing a whole bunch of stuff on our list when we did our intros today, but uh, we have a lot of stuff going on and um, in our personal lives and with our families and with, with work and stuff like that. And so someone's solutions uh, is really made possible because we have the heart to do it. So, you know, these ideas will come up or people will, will um, hit us up and have a need, especially when there's a need, like there was definitely a need for Illuminati where a parent asked us like, hey, my child has done the work to get into private high school. And now we're just looking for resources that can support them financially. Right. So that's kind of how Illuminati was born was from a direct need from the community. And obviously Fang and I don't have all the money to fund it, nor did our members uh, back then, but we definitely had a mind to put together something that would be solid and sustainable 11 years down the road, you know? And so, because I, I think one of the reasons why it works very well for, for us and why we've been able to be a, around for so long is because we don't get paid to do this work. And so, because we don't get paid to do it, um, it's, it is hard, it is difficult, and it's not for the faint of heart, but it also helps keep us motivated to be as accountable to ourselves and to our community as possible. 
So yeah, a lot of this stuff is just like late night phone calls, early morning phone right. calls. I start at 345 in the morning at, um, at work. So something might, I might think of something and I'll just call Fanga and she'll be really irritated with me because I, <laughs> <laughs> that, me time. or she'll think of something like at like 10 o'clock at night and I'm already trying to get to sleep. And I'm like, what? Oh, I think, you know, we should do this. I'm like, okay, I should sleep. <laughs> and then we should get out something. <laughs> but that's kind of how, uh, you know, a lot of our ideas kind of uh, came about. And we really want to thank, um, you know, like-minded individuals like yourselves who kind of roll in the same way, you know, in the same form right. fashion. And then years later, you know, FICA is a household name, Poly by Design is a household name. And it's just that service that some people never knew they needed. Right. 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 And now, right. you know, like just as much as we binge watch shows on Netflix, Fanga and I faithfully listen to the FICA podcast. No, you guys are so good. About that, you know? I'm like, oh, look, two people watch at being Fanga. <laughs> <laughs> catch up? And I'm like, I'm catching up right now. Or she's like, I'm catching up. So you catch up so we can talk about the episode. Yeah. yeah. We appreciate the work that you guys are doing because you know, and we have Doris Tulifao who is on and she's in Samoa and you know, there is no money in community work and oh, you yeah. really have to love what you're doing um, in order for it to survive. So oh, yeah. you know, yeah. we love I you guys. I don't think people understand that enough that uh, heart work right. is hard work. Right. And yeah. when, when yeah. you get into... Um, you know, people have talked to us about like, how did you guys start? And it's like, well, you would probably wouldn't want to know how we started. Like we just did it. For, we did. We didn't get paid a dime for two over two years. We just went to events because we thought that the light people needed, to, needed be, to see it. Yeah. Right? Like people need to know those events were out there or, you know, start a social media campaign for different organizations. But it's it is. Um, like you, you, I remember that we had you in the FCC uh, free oh, studio, yeah. and I remember you were both saying how uh, you got to love this. Like, if mm. you're doing this to uh, make a ton of money, or if you're doing this because for any other reason, then you simply want to help people and it's in your heart, it's not for right. you. Yeah. Um, yeah. And that was really early on with us. But it really, um, I asked Naki this on the air a while ago. Did you ever think that you would be? editing um, sound files together and clipping things and uploading those podcasts and all those mm -hmm. kind of things. Did you ever think that you would not only be doing it, but ever want to do those kind of things? Right. And when I see like the, the play and just looking at it for, as a, as right. an audience member, you've got to find Man, somebody to do lighting, right? Artwork and lighting light. and music and casting calls, and all those kind of things that I, I just thought the same kind of thing. Like, I wonder if they ever thought that they would be doing, you know, these kind of things, but you know, if it's your heart work, then you just figure out, Oh, I guess that's what we got to do. We got to figure it out. Um, right. I just wanted to shout out some people that are watching and screaming that they love you guys. Um, there is, um, I don't know if you know, um, well, Phil Alapati with Feel Good Cuts. We love you, Phil. Ricky Ngoteote, the Ngoteote uh, family, Britt Malona. Um, you guys are amazing. Love this. Um, Cheyenne Tuma Nuval. Look at me. Um, Nora <laughs> Seeley, good morning. Yeah, Hi. Yeah. <laughs> Check Deka me out. Tangaloa, <laughs> Ray Falo. Hey, Ray. Uh, Tui Amanono and Taleni James Tanielu, uh, James Palenga, Nadine Tufono, PJ. Hey, PJ. PJ. We love you, PJ. Hey. Uh, Monty. Uh, oh, Pastor Lucky Siaki is on. And the uh, city. Po Savea Sininho. Oh, sorry, Bobby Po. Paul. I can't pronounce your last name. Hi, Po. <laughs> love you. Yeah, but I mean, the thing that we, what Carl was talking about is I love is that like you self-taught yourself, you didn't like, and from what I get, graphic design is all self-taught. And now, did you ever think you would be doing that? Or is there something, um, Epi, that you've always loved about it? Because you're doing flyers for Samoan Solutions and, and now you're doing, you have your own company. You want to tell us about that and how you came up with the name? Um, I think, uh, you know, you, it's just kind of funny how, you know, God's design, you know, 
I never like when Carl says, did we ever think of doing this for me? I never thought of doing any of this, you know, at all. And I never, and, and my mind couldn't even think that far into the future. Like right. when uh, you're living paycheck to paycheck, which I was, and I'm still am very close to living paycheck to right, paycheck. Right, right, right. The mindset is also paycheck to paycheck. You know, it's very hard to look outside of yourself and look outside of what your needs are. I mean, the growth of someone's solutions in this whole time span that we've had it, I've had two children, I've married, had a divorce, you know, you know, um, built businesses, failed businesses, you know, so there's just all these different things that kind of snowball into the creation of where you're at in the now. Right. Right. Um, So I remember even like right now, the, the, the theater, that we're going to be recording Fangongo in is like asking me like, oh, who is your creative tech and sound director? And I'm like, <laughs> me? What's that? <laughs> that person do? Oh, oh that person oh, is I do that. that. I do that. I write out all the cues for the lights. I said, oh yeah, that's me. Can, yeah. you, can you spell out my title? Cause I don't even know what that is. <laughs> like, yeah, you know, you kind of just, you, you rise to the occasion and again, the motivation is uh, really just the heart to do it. Right. Uh, same kind of thing with um, graphic design. We needed somebody to do all these flyers and these posters. And I had uh, been familiar with how to use Microsoft Word in the past. So I kind of just kept doing it. Fanga will attest to it. I'm the most worst. I am the worst speller in the universe. And so I was waiting for the head nod for Big Sister. (laughs) (laughs) She'll go back and read it and be like, no, change this. Like, how do you, even my grammar, she'll be like, how do you still not know? I already corrected you. (laughs) Like, hey, I I guess not all things can be self-taught at once. Right. (laughs) Yeah, that size of the organization thing, when we um, got our press credentials for Bellator, um, I was talking to their media guy and he's like, yeah, so just, um, are you going to be, uh, the onsite, uh, person? And I said, yeah, it's going to be the two, there's gonna be two of us. Okay. So get a hold of your editor and have your editor write, um, <laughs> you know, the request up. And I'm <laughs> like, yeah, sure. I'll get a hold of my editor, hang up, <laughs> type it, send it. <laughs> yeah. But I just love when people go, so you and your organization, if you, you and your crew, I was like, my one, two. <laughs> that cracks me up. You know, and now we have Leah, you know, and, and, and our, you know, our crew is getting, but is bigger, but most of the time it's me and Carl running around. Um, Afi and Taolonga, good mo- or good evening. And Lulu. Hey, Lulu. Hello, Afi. Love you, Tao. So um, I, I just love the work that you guys are doing. And if, I know that you guys listen every week. So, you know, we talk about you every week. <laughs> you do. And, yeah, Thank we y'all. We love you guys, guys every week. So we love to support and, and love on you guys. Um, I know, Fanga, that um, you are in education, which is um, another, it's an essential worker if you're working at home. But t- tell us how you found found that, that love. And I know that you... Um, are working for, um, is it San Francisco uh, Unified School District now? Yes, I am a new hire with San Francisco Unified School District uh, special education teacher. And so I um, still not sure today, right now, actually they're having a board meeting. They're still deciding what it's gonna look like as far as return to school. I think they're, not going to make their actual announcement until mm-hmm. July 28th. So two more weeks. So we're still hanging in there. Um, but yeah, I, I I just listened to yesterday, yesterday while I was commuting or driving to pick up my kid, I was just listening to your episode with the mother daughter team, Kat and, um, mm. and her daughter and, and their journey to education and mine is kind of similar in the sense that I thought I might want to do like nursing when I was in high school then I went to a shadow career shadow day and I realized ooh, blood is not for me (laughs) no thank you don't want to be a nurse and then uh while I was in college here I 
I just was like, you know what, I really want to work with kids and I want to be a teacher. And I kind of veered away from being a formal school teacher and have spent the last 12 years in early childhood education. So, um, so I've been working with preschool to eighth grade for the last 12 years at a public, excuse me, at a private um, private school in Mellow Park. And then now I just got the call this school year about a program that SFUSD has called Pathway to Teaching, um, where teachers can be interns getting paid to awesome. work towards their credential. So I never could pursue my credential um, before because it requires like, you know, two plus years of student teaching for free. And, you know, we got to eat. So right. I was like, no, I'm not working for free. So when this opportunity came around, shout out to Ursula Ann Tiotanga, who's yes. a teacher with SFUSD. Um, you know, I was like, you know what, I got to, this is the time to make my move towards getting, you know, um, becoming a certificated um, teacher. And it just so happened that special ed was open. And before I worked in early childhood, I was working in special ed for one year at Burlingame um, School District with elementary school kids. So I thought, you know, I have the patience. I've done it before. I can, I can do it again. So yeah, that's kind of like the long way around to where I am now. That's awesome. Congratulations. We're so Thank proud you. of you. Thank you. Yay. Um, Phil Alabati is raising the roof. Darlene Venny is sending hearts. Andrew Vati is on. Hey, Andrew. Hey, Andrew. Drew. We call you right. Drew. <laughs> 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 so, Fangolo Samoa, you guys are going to do that um, online, or you're gonna? Are you still working on it? <laughs> we are gonna, working we on it. Sure? Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, because I love that play. And when we went the first year, we went twice, of course. And then everybody that has seen the play, I mean, if you haven't seen it and whatever you guys are going to do, we for sure are going to promote it. But it's very funny. It's it, like you said, it's now there's today humor and it, it tells stories or legends, which is what Fangongo is. And um, we were talking legends last week and just, um, have you guys heard of Mongifo? Yeah. Oh my God, I never heard of it. And then, so somebody's, uh, I, Dr. Reynold Samuel was talking about it on his thing. And he said- We love, he, we love you, Dr. Samuel. We love Dr. Samuel. Yes. <laughs> and he was talking about Mongifo and I was like, ooh. But then people started describing, oh, when you cut it open, there's this, white thing inside and it looks like a tooth and I was like Ooh. and then we just started telling all kinds of stories like my I tell this all the time are my um my uh, cats is cats is my signature of somebody you know somebody's uh, cats crying at my window somebody in our, our close to us is is going to pass away and so I I dislike, I don't want to say hate because I have a dog, but I dislike cats because as soon as we hear cats crying at our window and it's usually late at night, my kids freak out too. Now I got my kids freaking out when they hear cats. So um, we were talking about that. And then you were telling stories. You had started a, a post. Fonga, you want to tell us about our, uh, your, <laughs> that you were putting up? <laughs> yeah. So I, I just put that post out there because I was listening to the, the episode that you guys were talking about Dr. Samo's Nifo story and it just made me think about other stories and I heard one it's probably about 21 years old mm -hmm. but I mean you know it happened a long time ago but um, it was in Futinga and the driver was out there on this dirt road in Futinga it's dark there's no there's no um like lighting out there on the dirt road and he was driving towards the Malai along that dirt road and um, and he was kind of like steering uh, you know to avoid potholes and stuff on the dirt road and then all of a sudden this elder person appeared walking along the road who the driver hadn't seen previously as he's going along the road and all of a sudden this elder is there he sees this elder there and 
uh, you know, it's, it's late and, and yeah. it's dark and you're like, well, what do I do? Do I, <laughs> do I like gun it and just bypass the person and like, you know, mind my own business and, but the driver stops and, and has to, you know, lean across the passenger side to manually roll down the window and Oof. check on the elder and, and ask them, you know, well, do, would you like a ride to the Malai? And the elder is like, no, no, it's okay. I'm almost there. Uh, and, you know, when they talk, checking on the elder, it looks like a human, looks like a human, but, you know, you get this like sudden chill of goosebumps and yeah. stuff up your arm and, you know, it's hot in Samoa. You don't just right. get those bumps out of nowhere. Um, so then, you know, the elder um, turns down the ride and the driver pulls away. And, you know, when you're checking the rear view, they're, so like the person there. just vanished Ooh. all of a sudden. And so I I think it's paranormal. It sounds right. paranormal normal to me. I've heard of other people seeing elders dressed in like um, traditional wear, like mm-hmm. Siapo or... Ula fala stuff like that no shirt yeah. like walking around and they're like what why what you know why isn't somebody driving this elder around or why are they out in the middle of the night or where are they going you know this mm-hmm. all these questions and i think that stopping to check is probably a good idea check and then mind your business right but no i think you know if you had Pass that person by you don't know what, what would happen to you whether right. you make it to your destination or wake up with a with a nifo or who knows I know. right? so. and i i'm the biggest maka fifa so when we went to samoa and somebody was like oh are you guys gonna go to manua and i was like mm, nope Did anybody from manua here because i heard you have to get invited or go with somebody from you know the manua in order for you to go so i was like i don't know nobody i you know I'm not going without getting invited and so and then there's the um I think there's um, elders are that's a yeah. common common theme because like in Hawaii there was like in Kilauea National Park um Pele is mm. there's you know there's the story of uh an elder woman with white hair wearing red um and there's you know same thing the reports of like oh I saw her and then I turn you know the road turn and then I went to slow down and when I looked up, you know, she's not there. Or when I looked in my rearview mirror, she's not there. So I don't know if, you know, there's Hawaii and Samoa, um, probably the other islands too. That's probably a, uh, something common, a common theme through the, uh, islands is like mm. sightings of elders. Um, yeah. but yeah, I remember stories about Pele, um, on a big island. Yeah, yeah. That made me think about that movie, the Vi movie. I don't know if anybody. Oh, that is that the one where she's her. walking down the um, the path or the road, and then you yeah. go past? You know how in Samoa the the our family members are buried in front of the house, and so is that the one where she's walking down the road? Yeah. And as you're passing the houses, the people are actually standing in front of their graves, like. And I was like, yeah, that was like I was like I totally believe that. That is although totally- they were the the way they depicted them in the movie was that they were happy, right? They are yes. appearing in the scene, uh, in out of support and love for yeah. the, the, right. the young lady who is uh, leading the, the the procession, right? But I kind of thought about that uh, when I saw that that scene in the movie. I was like, <laughs> like, right? Maybe they're and really I see, there. Yeah. I seen that and, up, and at first, you know, dinging me and I was like, oh, why are those people standing there? And my daughter was like, mom, those are the elders that have passed that are coming to support her or so. And I was like, Ooh. but it, I, me, I totally believe like when I go to Samoa and I'm passing family members or even just on the side of the road, I'm always thinking, oh, hey, hi, I'm not being disrespectful. <laughs> <laughs> So, I mean, I, I love, and there's also good stories, you know, there's also the, um, what I heard is you can't wear your hair down at night if it should be in a fatbaku. I think that was years and years ago because, you know, I always wear my hair down when I had Is hair. that the tenesa, the the 12, tenesa? yeah, was that where the hair comes from? Like, don't wear your, don't oh, wear your hair down? Is that where that's from? Uh, it could be because usually if it's like you're not wearing your hair down because you can make the female spirit jealous, right? And, oh, yeah, or yeah, make yeah. you are, you know, showing that you are better looking than her or stuff like that. Right. I don't know. 
Yeah, That's they always say something about um, women, especially uh, women with like brown colored hair. Mm -hmm. They should always have their hair up to like. Poe said you have to go to Manua to experience it. <laughs> <laughs> right. True. Yeah, our grandmother is from Manua. And so we grew up even here in the Bay Area in San Francisco. Like our, our parent, our mom and our um, on our mom's side, they were like super sort of like aware of all of these mm. rules and all of these sort of like uh, paranormal or spiritual like encounters like our our grandmother she used to have like a uh, salt um uh, bags of salt with a copper penny on top of it in the corners of the house to keep uh, bad spirits away um and, and my this is in like south city our our, our, grand, our grandparents houses and um even when we would go to, you know, all of it, or we would go to the cemetery to visit people, they tell us to say too low when, yep. we, walk, when we walk through, you know, over and through other people's graves. Right. Um, and then, of course, when our parent, our mom was getting us ready to go to Samoa, to move to Samoa, she just had a whole bunch of stories that she bombarded us with for us to be cautious about. Pukinga yeah. was one of those villages you guys mentioned on the, um, you mentioned that yeah. on the show, like, a village that where you drive by and you're just supposed to be quiet. Our mom was very adamant about that in the village of Bukinga. And um, I remember on, on your post, Fangapo had mentioned uh, Vaikongi also, you know, is one of those, one of those villages where you just kind of, you don't cause no trouble, don't make any noise, just kind of mm -hmm. go through it and be respectful. Po said Ta'u in the house. Hey, <laughs> that's where our grandma's from. Yeah. Let me just shout out some Alexandria La Lofi Sailua. Oh, that's Lexi. Hey Lexi. Hi, Lexi. Um, Nani Wilson, who has Essence of, Mana, Essence of Mana Telenoid Tuesday at 7 p.m. Go check them out. Um, Angel Tilly. Hey, Florence Masoli. Hey Flo. Hey Flo. <laughs> Uh, Tapusoa, Simi, and Elena. Uh, Leandra Thompson and Christine Mawia. She says she loves you guys. Andrea, Gabriel. Hey, Cree. Yeah. Did your so grandmother talk about uh, like not brushing your hair at night? Was yeah. that? Our grandmother yeah. covered every mirror in our house. Um, yes. At night? Covered every mirror in our house yeah. in, in, uh, at night, too. Uh, no whistling at night or the ghost will slap your mouth. And we don't go yeah. 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 Um, my dog, my youngest one loves to whistle and I'm always telling her to stop. Don't whistle at night. She's like, why? And I go, because an Aiku is going to climb in your mouth. Now they will climb in your mouth. In your mouth. <laughs> hey, hey, don't be I, just, I don't want to wake up <laughs> nobody. I don't want to. Let's just, you know, no sweet. How about no sweeping at night? Yeah. I heard no sweeping at night. Jay no and out. Tassi. Jay. Yeah, and then don't don't have don't get pregnant because then they're gonna add a whole list more of stuff that you can't oh, do. You can't do. You gotta be oh escorted, God. right? If you're when I was pregnant, when I was pregnant, you can't, you can't, pregnant, can't wear earrings. You can't wear a necklace. You can't wear. You can't drive whatever. around at night. My mom used to say you can't drive around at night when you're pregnant. She and I was like, why? She's like, because people on the side of the road will jump inside your car. I was like, what? <laughs> She's like, there's there's aikus in, that are you know roaming around at night and they'll jump inside the car. I was like, okay. Um, Ricky Ngateota said the mafa up between ba Batia and Afono. I've never oh, heard that one. He's got to tell us about that. Uh, Nekatasi, hello. Jay Ekatasi says hi, Epi. Hi. It's interesting you talked about the salt um, because when you see, I don't know if you've seen like a, a sumo match, um, in the beginning, the sumo wrestler comes out, throws salt into the ring, and it's to, uh, to get rid of the evil spirits in the ring so salt must be uh that must be a common theme that yeah. that wards off evil spirits. so there was a there was a, pe a copper penny in, yeah. on top of the salt mm -hmm. yeah she had it and it was in all the corners of the house and i something had been happening where there had been just like some crazy experiences and mm -hmm. then it was our auntie from alofao um our auntie rena that had called and talked to our grandfather and told our grandfather that they should put the salt with the penny in in the corner of the house in the corner 
Yeah. So and then Allo follows also our side that has that has that uh, that what Dr. Samo was talking about. Uh, oh, I yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. I seen that it's right post by the too. ocean. So we're we have well, or mean you know according to our family, there's one <laughs> that's alongside of our house and across the street from our family house are these really big pulu trees, uh. and so the those they have superstitions or well you know beliefs about those trees too like you can't be hanging out underneath those trees at nighttime like oh. you know be careful because you know uh late night the the spirits are walking along the path from the ocean to the to the mountain oh, yes to the mountain so, like, that scared Ooh. me i'm like i'm Even not sleeping in no um, pathway when we would uh when oh. we would have uh palablaves in the farkele there in alopal they would tell us we can't sleep on that side of the house that because of that, because you might get sold you by an Aiku because that's the part that is in line with the uh, Awalo. So oh, heck no. Yeah. yeah. I'm a scaredy cat. Ricky says, <laughs> um, I, I am a big time. I'm like the biggest Makafefe you will ever see. Kiana. Hello. Uh, Ricky said, don't eat out of a can nor use a knife as a oh, spoon. When you're fork. pregnant. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 Oh my. And then Tui Amanono says, what about that Aiko that eats all the food in the fridge? <laughs> oh, that's me. That's me. That's me, Tui. I think we all got that one. We all have that one in our house. That would be me. That would be me. COVID-19. <laughs> yeah, Tui, that would be me. That would be me. So that's very funny. And yeah, then, when our then, sister was uh, our sister was pregnant, and that time we lived in Alofa, we would have to walk one of us in front of her and one behind her oh, to protect wow. her from at nighttime from the spirits, you know. And at the time, I was just trying to I was just trying to live my life. I was like, <laughs> okay, why can't, can't, go to the why can't by she herself? walk by herself? Like, yeah, her feet work. Like, ah, uh, yeah. yeah, this all of it was at the time. It was just really inconvenient for me because I was trying to do me I was just trying to be worried about the life. <laughs> we need you to protect your sister Epi <laughs> and now now I'm man I put the fear in these children before we went to Samoa last year I told them the same stuff yeah. I told them so don't you go nowhere without me don't be making loud noises in the middle of the night and yeah we just perpetuating these uh these ghost stories but making sure time, they don't want to cut out there I, I know like is this really or is this was this the plan was in the house <laughs> prevention a little, a little bit of both yeah, a little, bit of both. A little, bit, a little of both. bit of both yeah yeah i love that when i went to american samoa you know when they uh, well really in samoa when we were in a uh, um apia when the clock struck six o'clock like you had to be in your house. Kids, I was watching kids book in the rain to get home. And I was like, that is so cool that they still do that. Now, I didn't see too much in American Samoa. It kind of faded a little, at least where we were at. But um, I love that when we were in Samoa, like those kids had death in their face trying to get <laughs> home before six o'clock. So I love yeah, that. Yeah, they, they have that still in some in some places in American Samoa, Leonis still practices the uh, <laughs> Sa for Lokuafiafi. And I remember when we were there and we were young, Pavayai, they were strong. They would always come out with their Aumanga and patrol. And, and, yeah. and then even in Alofau too. So because we lived at a store, mm-hmm. uh, if you were out on the street when the, when the Sa started, you could come and sit under our porch outside of the store just to wait for it to pass so that you're not walking around on the street and get oh my gosh. Asala. Kiana said, and who ended up making noise in the middle of the night singing <laughs> Disney karaoke? Yeah, that happened last year when we were home and, you know, like just we've been in America so long, we forgot about the saw. I forgot about yeah. the saw, but mind you now, the bell for the saw is right on our grandfather's you know, our oh, wow. office. So we're like, oh, what's that? Hey! hey! <laughs> <laughs> our dad is like, hey, check bat, it out. Bat, bat. Right now. <laughs> like, oh, man, you're really killing the vibe, saw. Right, oh, yeah. Done with this. And, and it was also our family's um, Fuyala that was doing Aobanga that night. So, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, Rick. 
I mean, this, the Ricky said getting tattooed, you had to have a saw, someone who's shoulder to shoulder with you. What do you yes. guys know that? Oh, that is oh getting tattooed at the same time. Is that what well, he meant? I think he's talking about when you get the malofie. Oh. If you're getting the pea or the malu and you need someone to be your partner. And yeah, oh. it is when we went through the process, it is more so that your partner can have a break and they get a chance to heal. It's a long, because it's a long process. Oh, so that's okay. what he means by that. Okay, thank you. I didn't even know that one. Beatrice F. Allo, hello. Angeline Moore, hello. Yeah, uh, Kiana, Kiana busted you guys out with your Disney <laughs> karaoke. <laughs> I, love, I love those stories, but I'm also a scaredy cat. So, yeah. you know, when we went to Samoa, I just didn't go too many places by myself or at all. Well, I did sneak out a couple of times, but, but I would you know, the dogs gave me up. There are so many dogs in Samoa, right? Yeah, and the dogs gave me up too when I was in high school. Yeah. <laughs> Camp dogs. <laughs> Over there too. We came into uh, America Samoa at night. So when we went to uh, the hotel, we were driving down the road to the hotel and there were dogs everywhere. And I was really big into taking a morning walk. And when I woke up that morning, I was like, I'm not going for a walk this early because the dogs are going to come out. I'm yeah. going to wake everybody up. So, but yeah, there were dogs everywhere um, in both American Samoa and Samoa. But um, I just remember seeing like every yard had a dog when we drove um, out past Pongo and then over to uh, Latia Bay. Um, every yard had a dog like standing at the end of the end mm -hmm. of the driveway. Um, no walks. And I can imagine it'd be hard to sneak out of any house because every yeah. every house has a dog. Mm -hmm. I or don't how see about... many dogs in Upolu, though. Oh, no. yeah. Not Plenty in, Upolu. in American Samoa, but I didn't lots. see any in Upolu. Lots and lots. Uh, it was Carl's first time, so we took him to Samoa. And he said, um, oh, hey, you want to go to the mall? You guys know what the mall looks like in American Samoa. It's like <laughs> five <laughs> stores. It's like <laughs> five <laughs> stores. <laughs> yeah. It was like five stores. Um, Monty, you guys visited. Oh yeah, we went to uh, Potasi when we were in um, uh, uh, in Samoa. So I mean, Samoa is so much. Um, Apia and Upolo is so much. I don't know, not touched as much as American Samoa. So I really enjoyed it in. I know it's not Western, but that's how I separate the two. Um, people are just re responding. So is there anything going on? Like you guys have your uh, Samoan Solutions 5K Turkey Trot um, for charity. And I love that you guys pick a, a local charity every year. And and this last year was the mobile. Mobilize oh. love. Yeah, and I love that they, they're the group that, or they, the company pulls up and you can wash your clothes or you can take a shower there for uh, people that are homeless. And so um, I'm hoping that COVID will go away and we get to do Turkey <laughs> Trot again this year. Us too. How did we're that come hoping, about? We're hoping that, that the COVID goes away also. Um, uh, and shout out to Mobilize Love and the organ their entire organization who's really been putting in work during uh, shelter in place, right. providing hot meals for our communities in need, and really just they're out there. They've been we've seen them out there with their trucks, uh, their stage trucks for mm -hmm. uh, in support of Black Lives Matter protests, and you know really just a stand up organization. And we're we're so thankful that we were able to support them um, in a humble way that uh, we did through the 5K Turkey Trot uh, proceeds. Um, and the 5k turkey trot came about because in Samoa and the high schools, um, you know, well, in the best high school in the land. Oh, here we go. Was, uh, Leona High School, <laughs> of course, in all of the land. If we're telling the story, I can yeah, say tell it. Tell the story, I girl. I can say it how I want it. So in Leona <laughs> High School, we grew up, we grew up when we were there, um, they had a annual turkey trot or a turkey run. And so, um, with the winner from each grade level there and, and then even the staff participated they got to go home with the turkey and so we just kind of adapted that to support um, 
uh, healthy living and um, mm-hmm. active, active living, especially during the holidays when it's the hardest yeah. time uh, to get moving because you just want to get eaten, right? Yeah, right. <laughs> so right. we adapted that, brought it here, and then it is one of the ways that we are, as an organization are able to support other efforts in the community, not just our own um, not yeah. just someone's solution. So like you mentioned, Naki, we pick an organization or even a grassroots effort um, or um, family um, run efforts such as um, uh, with the Alapati family or mm-hmm. Phil, we were able to support one year uh, Uncle Al's clothing drive, right. a family run effort. Um, uh, in the past, we've also been able to support the work of uh, Catholic Worker House who offers shelter and meals for those who are homeless here in San Mateo County. Um, Hope and Love also out of Burlingame. Um, Yeah, so it's just, it's kind of been a really fun and active way for us to engage community, support um, brothers and sisters out there doing great, amazing work, and then also uh, try to help ourselves get moving and get motivated. And also just to connect with one another. Um, and it started out with uh, just probably like maybe 30 people. We mm-hmm. founded this event with Pacific Health Club uh, under the leadership of David Ane and uh, Sha Chin Chu. Um, and I'm, I'm so I apologize. I'm, she actually has a new last name now, but um, I don't know what it is. And uh, also uh, Erica, um, possibly Erica Ane now or is it uh, erica yeah. joe erica joe yeah she was uh you know one of the uh, just a really uh, awesome core team that uh helped kind of take care of all of the physical side of the event and then Fanga and i and Salma solutions we work to take care of all of the logistics and everything else um when uh phc sort of uh, uh they kind of um took a step back from community work and Um, we're focusing on other things we just kept it going and then now it's just like evolved into such a great fun event that has um survived uh hail storms and (laughs) uh, smoke smoke smoke, uh, smog yeah yeah. rain so and had to rig the the clock up to the battery (laughs) that was awesome humble humble beginnings yeah MacGyver. she macgyvered that that so speaking of, of food and speaking of the <laughs> turkey trot, if we manage to shed our COVID-19 clothes by the time the turkey trot rolls around, um, Polly by Design would like to provide the food during the yes. event for yes. the attendees. Yeah. So, yeah, we're hoping COVID goes away. We're hoping COVID goes away because we just love that event. We love all the work that you guys are doing. It's we're blessed to be in you guys' circle. Like we, Carl and I, would, we would talk about this all, like how did we get to hang, you know, how did we get to be with Epi and Fanga and not, you know, like how did we get here? <laughs> so not worthy. It was it was the turkey trot though. Um, I think Carl was busy that day. And so Naki had to come by herself that, that first year that she yeah. came and literally like uh, we're running on island time. Like, and so she, arrived and our tent guy hadn't shown up yet and yeah. <laughs> just like am I in the right place like oh yeah yeah you're in the right place don't worry you're just early and then the yeah. tent guy shows up and then everything just kind of like gets Went thrown together place. and then and then it's on right then the yeah. event's on but um it was that was a year bad. was raining like sideways right was that the, um, the crazy rain? No. I think that was a year no. after. Oh, yeah, it, was a year after. it was the year after, but it was the year that we had wildfires. And so everybody had their um, N95 masks on mm-hmm. <laughs> because we almost got canceled that year because of the fires. Yeah. And yeah. you know what? You, it, was, it, was, it was one thing that I'll, I'll never forget about that year is that all these, all the returning, a lot of, not all of them, but a lot of returning runners and participants, they came with a mask for our dad because Aww. they knew that he would be there. And they all- Because he walks every Does year. Does your dad have a mask? We bought this mask for your dad. I'm like, oh my gosh. And then I turn around and uh, Sister Amy's like, I brought this mask for your dad. And like, we were like, everybody's <laughs> like, and like, they're all caring for him. And he's really like, I am walking the fastest so I can get my turkey. He's already like in the zone. <laughs> like, what is yeah. this mask? <laughs> he's like, oh, oh, thank you, thank you. 
Like, I just awesome. love your dad. I love your dad. That day that we had interviewed, we were interv- interviewing you guys and doing clips for <laughs> Fangongo and Samoan Solutions. And we asked your dad, ever, all of us had a part for the commercial. And then your dad comes in and he's like, I was born in, <laughs> and then I was like, turn the mic on, turn the mic on, let's start recording. Yeah, Naki and I were recording. all trying to sneak towards the, hit the record <laughs> button, there we go. And it was, uh, it was so interesting that we were doing that, and you were, we were like, here's the script, here's what you say, and he said something, and then we were, uh, we were like, no, no, okay, do it one more time, and then I, at that point is where you could see the elder and him just said, no, I'm going to say what I have to say. And he spoke for like, I don't know, like 45 minutes and it yeah. was gold. I mean, that, that interview yeah. was, um, it was amazing. And we were just, we kept, I kept looking at the recording button going, it's recording, right? It's recording. We're getting yeah. all this. We it need more time awesome. with him actually. Yeah. And when I'm looking at our nephew, uh, Vo, and I'm, we're just looking at each other like this guy. Hi, <laughs> <laughs> Jack. Hi, <laughs> Jack. You had one line, old man. But you know, we're we're so our family is so thankful that you guys had the foresight to just hit that record button because, um, again, it's something we never knew we needed. And then, uh, you know, I'm I'm a daddy's girl all the way. So, anything that we have that can just keep his memory alive, far past his physical body being here, we're grateful. And we're right. so thankful for Poly by Design for affording that opportunity to our children and our grandchildren and, and all his great grandchildren. And yeah, we're thankful. Yeah, it's awesome. Uh, it, he, it was one of our high, like downloaded yeah. shows. That's one of our top, I'd have to say top three shows was your dad's show because it had so many downloads. I was like, damn, how many kids he got? <laughs> I was like, damn, how many kids he got? <laughs> But it, it, it was an awesome interview. I love to hear elders speak about the past and their experience. And them telling their story makes me appreciate their road, you know, and the struggles that they've gone through. So it's it's crazy and it's amazing. And we want to do more of that with, with our elders. But we want to, we're going to let you go. Uh, our hour has come and gone, but you know, Woo-hoo. we welcome you guys, you know, anytime, every time you got anything. And sometimes Epi, you know, Epi came in one time just to, to fight <laughs> and we just sh- shoot the shit. <laughs> Open mic. Open mic. Yeah. Right. And so, um, I know Kiana says you guys are everywhere. Uh, Kalepi says, hi, mom. Hi, we love you, Lab. Yeah. Lopez Talamoa. And Rhoda Samoa, hey, Metu Isela said, uh, Kameki Leonga. Oh, no. Yay. Hey, there you go. Kameki <laughs> Leonga, number one. Oh, Le- okay, okay. <laughs> I'd have to say, though, when we went to Flag Day, uh, Leone High School had the biggest, and the green and yellow mm-hmm. had the biggest mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. best, mm-hmm. Um, you know, sh- now, don't shoot me now. I'm just telling you. <laughs> oh, You're making some that I'm just telling you what I see. Speaking the truth. I'm just telling you what I see. <laughs> but it was awesome. Uh, Benjamin Asu, that's my cousin right there. Hey Ben, oh, we love you, Ben. <laughs> oh, you gotta go follow Ben. You gotta, you gotta follow Ben. Oh, okay. Cool we're gonna, musician. we're gonna follow you, Ben. We may need He's to have dope. you on, right? <laughs> yeah, you can have him on. You, Maybe we need bet. to talk to Ben. A lot of fun. Yes, we need to talk to Ben. But thank you, sisters, for coming in. Um, follow Samoan Solutions on all social media outlets. Look for announcements of Fangongo Samoa. Yes. Hopefully, we'll have the Samoan solutions by k turkey trot for charity follow someone solutions epi and fanga and uh, go to amazon and order 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 and if you need flyers <laughs> or <me>. pins or <laughs> everything contact epi we yeah, love you, can you just guys call epi and say so we don't much. even know we have a deadline of tonight and we don't even know what we want can you get it back to us and she still gets it back to us <laughs> <laughs> thank you so I'll much sisters happen. We Thank love you, ladies. We love you. Thank you so much. Thank you, everybody. Share, share, share. Share, share, share. Essence.